Welcome to Living Magic, an occult cast and your gateway to the mystical and esoteric. I'm Fola, and I'll be your guide on this enchanting journey through the realms of magic where we explore the mysteries that lie just beyond the veil in a way that is practical, fun, and inspiring. In each episode, we'll dive into the teachings of ancient wisdom, uncover the practices that have informed Magi of old, and meet the modern-day practitioners who weave magic into their daily lives. From alchemy to high magic to astrology and earth-based practices, we'll explore the myriad ways in which the esoteric arts manifest in our world today. Join me as we hear stories from those who live their personal magic, individuals who embrace the mystical in their day-to-day existence, transforming the mundane into the extraordinary. Whether you're a seasoned practitioner or a curious seeker, Living Magic is here to inspire, inform, and ignite the spark of the magical within you. Each week, I'll bring you insightful interviews, practical magical techniques, and intuitive guidance to illuminate your path. Connect with this community of like-minded souls all journeying together on the exploration of the arcane. In this interview, I had the pleasure of speaking with Nezrin Aragon, a healer and call bearer with LA-based School of Hermetic Science and Magical Arts, 22 Teachings. Nezrin draws upon her Anatolian roots and connection to water to bring truly transformational healing to those she supports both one-on-one and in group healing sessions. When I first met Nezrin in person at 22 Teachings last summer, I was inspired by her courageous authenticity and powerful presence. It was an honor to interview her and hear her thoughts on how we can all begin to live a life of intention, from making our beds in the morning to holding ritual space for others. She also shared about her experiences within the realm of death and dying, how the transition of a loved one can bring deep transformation and actually brings us closer to those we have had to say goodbye to, as well as what it means to step into a world of saying yes to one's own magic. So, without further ado, I invite you to step with me into the wondrous world of living magic. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, Today, we are starting a new sort of uh, broadcasting. This is Living Magic, and my name's Fola, and with me today, I have Nezrin Aragon, who's with the Los Angeles-based school, 22 Teachings. They do all things hermetic science and magical arts there. Really great school. Um, and Nezrin, I'm yeah, really, really excited to have you here today. So thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited too. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, this is awesome. I feel like you have just, yeah, like you exude this energy of magic. And as I, you know, I, I'm going to share a bit about your, your background here, if I may, um, based off your bio and I just really reading it and coming to know you a bit more and witness you and what you're creating in the world. It's like, Oh yeah. Okay. There's something, this love, you just said it before we recorded, but uh, Nezrin was inspired by her Anatolian roots um, and she's a healer and a call bearer. She practices a form of healing called Ashkik Shifa, which is Turkish for love of healing or healing of love. And yeah. so, yeah, Nezrin, maybe you could start us off a bit about just sharing, like, yeah, your magical journey. What has that <laughs> been like? So vague, I know, hey? <laughs> magical journey. Well, um, that is a very uh, magic. It's, um, this is the information that I didn't know until I come to this moment, is that um, that we're all magical beings that I didn't know that when I was growing up. So um, it's, it's something you become to, but um, in time living the life and learning from everything and uh, most importantly, unlearning a lot of things, uh, I, I really start walking with that magic side of myself and um and um of course a lot of things uh be a part and then be a role in that um just being 
how I grew up, how, how I been raised and how my relationship with everybody else. And, and uh, like I said before, on learning things and relearning myself and most importantly, connecting with my own soul and spirit is the, it was the starting point mm -hmm. and then becoming and entering the doors of 22 teachings and meeting with the Naha when your student is ready, teacher will appear. And it gives the structure how I'm going to start walking and it's give me the daily practice of um, becoming true myself. Mm -hmm. And and then the finally, it's like real realization. I am that I've been all along. Now I'm just gonna be, and it's not. Also, it's like it's not. What it's not an act of doing the magic. It's like like. I love the title you're calling it is living with the magic. Um, when you not have your life and take the magic and including the part of your life is other way around is making the life, your life is a magic and then adding daily activity or living like driving and shopping and working like little sprinkles of that so other way around um yeah i don't know did i answer your question but that's how my journey has been is like coming becoming uh arriving and uh, continuing working and um just being myself mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so huge, a huge part within that what I'm hearing too is that like that personal truth of like who you be, mm -hmm. how you wish to show up. You mentioned like relationships even, you know, and right. and I guess a lot of how that shows up in our lives is through the old story, which you mentioned having to let go of. And I'm thinking back to when we met in person last summer uh, at the school there and like, we just had a conversation in the mercantile shop. And, and right. that was basically what you were saying to me was just like coming to yourself, like, and then your power comes through and it is very much a shedding. It, um, is. it is so, and, and then also that piece of, I, I heard that like I said like the Buddhist kind of uh statement with like carry wood, chop water, you know, like it's like that's part of the magical spiritual life as well as very much this physical day-to-day -day existence that that we are living in. Um and it's I think when we start, I could, at least I can speak for myself, starting my magical journey or the spiritual journey really more consciously I thought it was so much more about the uh the the rituals I did or that I made sure I do, did xyz that seemed like within the spiritual sense uh right. but it's it's so much more than that like it's so like much. everything yeah I mean like waking up in the bed um like op you open your eyes and you see the first sunlight, that's where the magic starts. I mean, like it doesn't stop when we sleep. We even like do more work to me. I, sometimes I'm like, okay, that last night was exhausting <laughs> because there's feel like I did so much and did background work and I help other people in the different timeline. Mm. It's just like, and then you wake up and you're like, okay, I'm blessed with another day. And um, I'm here to serve my purpose. And I'm here to walk and talk at the same alignment. So mm -hmm. it's just, uh, it's not a thing we do. Is that it, it is what it is. It's like, we're living in it. Mm -hmm. This is it. We're mm -hmm. a magical beings. So journey mm -hmm. is our life. Mm -hmm. The lifetime journey it is <laughs> so yeah and it's, be... not, it's not like unicorns and clouds and happy butterflies and like oh pink clouds it's i mean it comes to that there's like like 
endless moments of like seeing the beauty in things and um and I, I i i you will hear me saying like getting high of that beauty it just like just breathing that another being energy radiates off them is in realizing that that how magical that is how grateful should be we should all be to be actually living in this life mm. and align together and like making connections like this so mm. it's like all in the right path yeah well and hearing you say that makes me like think you know i think that was going to be one of my questions more so but i know you do a lot of work or at least you you held a um like a workshop on death the death teachings it was called okay yeah and so that whole concept of like grief and loss dying um and hearing you say that about like the rainbows and unicorns like <laughs> yeah how did that sort of start to show up in your life besides having to let things go that maybe didn't serve you like what's that that's a big part of it right uh also um um I um I lost a friend uh and I watched the whole um let me rephrase that I didn't lost a friend they I had a friend who transitioned mm -hmm. because they're still very much with me all the time so and and watching his transition and he actually transitioned in my arms and that awakening something and then having that connection and sometimes like when somebody's going through that transition we all we think okay i need to do something like a, a like a fixing agent is like activates and you're like okay i need to fix this situation and make it not that what's going to happen but sometimes mm -hmm. Going through that transition, that's exactly what souls need because the work they did is already done. And then there's a purpose of moving on to something else. So experiencing that with my friend um, and uh, experiencing every fact, like being in the hospital and not being prepared and how that grief works. How do I allow that person to trans? transition mm -hmm. and how the families react and then i in in time with that experience i experienced my own uh transitions in my life first i got actually i got sick a couple of years ago um like three years ago and then they told me i'm gonna transition in seven years and that awaking a lot of things in me because when you know this is gonna go to the end mm -hmm. um in this life then you start appreciation and you start understanding more deeply things what is it what is the grief we're dealing with what how do we prepare to that moment and how do we prepare the, our loved ones with that moment and um and then losing my uh my mom passed and experiencing whole, whole that and knowing how we were in that connected with my mom we were connected of course i'm her daughter but it's like after her transition is this incredible gates wide open and now she's like constantly being here and i can feel her talking becoming one of my guides and um with me listening my instinct and mom is like not in her human form because the human form it comes with a lot of attachment what she learned what how she got raised what it was on her system to get it out and imply on me that she thought it was the right things those are disappears 
So everything we actually like fixated on and uh, like we want to make it happen, it just fades away when we transition. So learning all that facts, it just brought me to, and I'm being a dead doula for my mm -hmm. friend and help him not heal, but transition, which is, is also is a big healing is I also learned that sometimes not healing is a healing mm. to someone because it's time to let go. Just like we let go everything constantly. There's a constantly letting go happening every day. Sometimes it could be trauma, emotions and feelings. And sometimes it could be people and relationships or our habits or many things but um when all those things disappear from the soul and the soul is finally free having that connection with it i i couldn't stop talking about it because mm -hmm. i feel like we need to talk about it so we don't have to be you know that there's like there's a many songs i cannot live without you i cannot take a breath breath without you all those fixated ideas that they're like plant, like they planted on us and they serve us to, so we can be like, okay, when this has happened, this is it. Everything crashes down, you're alone. But that reality is we're more even connected, but we're just not talking about it. Mm -hmm. That is not the bad thing that is not the end that is like a new beginning if we're celebrating the birth then we need to celebrate the death mm -hmm. is it just and that's that's how i start yeah like having a sharing with the people <laughs> everyone around me so that's where the, the teaching is born yeah wow well because yeah i think that that's that lived experience right it is. death experience it is. Like, what use that term even? It, like... it is right is everything we ex but i mean i feel like we'll learn a lot from uh, just by living and but what we take from that experience and imply is the important part sometimes you can go through many things but if you're not acknowledging what you're going through or what why that's happening why you're learning this lesson right now mm -hmm. we always look at it as like um oh why this is happening to me oh boo me but i'm like okay it's happening but there's a happening for a reason either it's going to remove something out of your system remove something out of your body or maybe like even the ancestry uh needs to be cleared up so you can be completely through yourself because the thing is more we let it go and clear up the this physical human body more we connected with the soul more we connected to the soul more we're on our path more we're on our path then more we can be who we are where we came here for mm -hmm. so if we want to do what I'm supposed to be meant to be doing in this life, well, we need to clean this body first, then be connected with the soul. And we choose these bodies. We Clearly we have some kind of contract and along the way that's gonna lead us somewhere. So just being in the, being in the bo boat and just walking is, mm. yeah. I think I just off track. <laughs> no, that's okay. I love I love, I love all of it because it's like <laughs> there, there's so many pieces there, you know. Okay. Like, and I I wanted to touch first on yeah, especially you know, and I'm curious based on your like ancestral background, the relationship of death, because it seems as though in our like Western like North American culture, death is very much a shadow aspect, like. It's right. hidden. It's not talked about. It, we we fear it. And growing up, I mean, I've shared this lots on the channel. Like when I was growing up, I was like so scared of death, so right. scared. And 
Um, especially when I was in like my early, early adult years, I would think about my parents dying and, oh my gosh, they can't die first. I'll have to die first. Cause I don't think I could handle it, you know, right. and I'm a Scorpio son. So like death transformation is very much who I be. I've come to learn and accept death in a different way now, like with a lot of the work that I've done and yet still it's like, we yeah that relationship with it is kind of gone i think from right. from the physical death of an individual in our life that we know and they transition to like the loss or death of or having to let go of something in our right. physical life so right. yeah from an ancestral lens like how would you say that kind of uh, informed your relationship with with death and these teachings um well i'm a native anatolian so um it's very interesting because okay so being here as a anatolian and being from different country it had a lot of effect on the way because i was trying to um bend and box and like mold myself to be here in in this culture which reality is doesn't fit however you try to mold it is it's gonna come out it's gonna stick out from the cracks and the holes and because it's not you it's not your true self uh, at least not this body mm -hmm. and we choose this body for a reason so um once i realized I can be in my own uh, bloodline and in this body, and I can elevate what I know. Um, it just was eye-opening experience. So um, even like using the words uh, uh, doesn't have to be translate to English. Like my healing is called Ashkashifa, and I didn't call like love healing. I could have, mm. but it's not big, like to keep it to the true self. Mm. So once you start combining two things together, what you learn and let go and become pure. And then you're like, okay, now I'm going to activate what is this body is. Uh, he, I think that's when truly become a uh, whole, uh, whole full circle. Um, so, and because there is a lot of things I learned growing up, there is a lot of rituals that we did and we didn't call it ritual. I thought it was a normal thing. And I thought that everybody does do those things. Like, what do you mean you don't have, you know, I'm like, what do you mean you don't pour water off people when they leave your house? I mean, I grow up with that. When somebody's leaving your house and they're going to like drive away to, let's say they're in LA, they're going to drive to San Francisco. We, we like, we get a bucket of water, bowl of water, and we take a mirror and, and you pour the water over the mirror. It means that your road will be like clear as a mirror and the, you flow like a water. Mm -hmm. So I thought everybody does that. That was a normal thing because I grew up, we pour water. I was like, always like, let me pour the water. Let me pour the water. And it was a thing. And, but see those kind of things, those kind of ritual, like grow up doing it. And they start becoming activated online. And they're like, okay, so you have this knowledge and this knowledge and this knowledge too. Um, like in the dead processing the, when the body is just a body, the soul left, even the process of that is like, we wash it, like you wash it like with soap and you put, rose water you put flower petals you put 
clothes like mm -hmm. and then you wrap it with the cleanest cloths is like whole process is just so beautiful because it shows like a blessing and like appreciation for this body since like since the soul left now we're like wrapping it and like giving back to the earth even those things is come from my bloodline or like my culture or where i grew up at like absolutely huge part of it everything i do because there's not one there's so many mm. of things that uh, affects and calls in even like making things beautiful like my mom used to said like okay you make your bed you walking out from the room you turn around and you look at it is is the is the thing is like a final touch because you being too close sometimes you miss things but when you're done you're like okay i'm done you turn around and you're walking away and you that turn it gives you a different lens hmm. so now you can look at it as like i'm not that close i am looking from the offside person and you look at it and if he's like feels satisfying then you walk away but there's always like oh like oh i forgot that and then you fix it it's just like a huge part <laughs> how much part they played it has a huge part of a lot of things well, and I see that, like I told you, I'm like, I love your videos, even in the lodge when I see you like doing the purification with water, because I, I hope you can share a bit about your relationship with water, that like yeah. everything is so intentional that you do. Yes. And it, you know, I was watching that video on the website that I can't recall who made it. I hadn't seen it before, but it's just you kind of in, in your like magic and you were, you were lifting up a sheet on the bed that had the crystals like on the massage table yeah and you did that like way more times than I would have but I just sat there like what is this like there was that intentionality in the movement like it started to move energy and I was like that in itself was just like healing so so I know we 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 talk about intention and like visualization and like looking at these pieces are like yeah do you mind sharing a bit more about that like what what is that for those <laughs> <laughs> it's just me uh well the, the video is on the the 22 teachings uh website mm -hmm. is is uh, recorded by lisa talbot and um she's also a student of the the school and um it, I just needed to express how my healing will look. So that's me showing that just the, if you are like standing outside of it, uh, that's how it looks. But when you're in it, the energy, yes, the sheet you're talking about is comes from like four generation of the, in my family, mm -hmm. the, the, I think my great, 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 grandmother made it with hand it has like gold uh embroidery with like flowers and roses on it so that is like because it's a love healing right it's not it's not it's not only about like oh like relationship love is is it's not about like, oh, you break up with someone in love. It's like, not like fall in love. It's the the, the unconditional love. So mm -hmm. in my healing, the whole energy is completely unconditional. And so it's like the way the mother nature loves us. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm reflecting that in there. So because, I mean, the healer is, we're raising the energy the healer is a healer i believe is that the most energy do you rise that and 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 the person who you're working on is it just starts swimming in that energy and mm. it's so powerful 
and then start activating things. The activating that, because so rarely the people come a connection connected with unconditional love. Mm -hmm. I mean, I truly believe I haven't in my maybe a few times, but only time I got a um, one on one with unconditional love was when I was in nature. Mm -hmm. Because we we're not very good lovers of the nature. We do a lot of things. I mean, we don't need to go in there. We know what we do. Mm -hmm. it, um, all the chemicals and everything we create and yeah, um, keep building. Yeah, now I can't stop talking. <laughs> uh, so all the not natural things we create and do in the um, nature is affects deeply. So, but even that is nature is like, here's the vegetables, here's the fruits for you. Here's the fresh air. Here's the connection. Here's the water. Here's the plan. Why don't you sit underneath me and then breathe in, ask for the healing, and I release all of my medicine to you. Like, there's so much we can learn from the nature. Mm. So, and I've been uh, being sick um, for which it was not like, you know, I got a flu. I got an autoimmune disease, got activated in my body because the stress and the traumas was I was holding in my body, it was it would just start creating mm -hmm. extra damage in the physical body. And um they're like, well, if you're gonna keep walking to this path, which you are, you need to do something about this. So in that times that I find myself in the nature connecting with the trees, walking bare feet, and talking to the flowers. And once you connect it to that, animals, the birds, owls, the ravens, you name it, snakes. Um, once you completely connect it and you're aligned with them and you understand, you let go the fear of them because there's a lot of also the fact that there's a, a lot of fear and in, in everything, right? We look at the tree and then you're like, oh, it's a beautiful tree, the green leaves, and then there's a bird nest, but there's also roots of the tree mm -hmm. that we don't pay attention to. That roots is, it stays in the, that dark stage, but there's a whole different life. Like we say at the school all the time, as above, so below. So if you think there's a beauty in above, there's a more beauty in below because we don't even, we didn't even experience it yet. We didn't even see mm -hmm. it yet. And that mushrooms a connection. But anyway, so once I learn all that, reflecting, like taking in and observing and processing all that energies in my physical body, which helped me heal mm. three autoimmune disease mm. and two almost cancers. And, and I'm like, okay, time to reflect. Mm. Time to reflect all of that. So mm -hmm. when you see me in the video shifting the thing, I am. I am like lifting the lifting the energy, what you brought it on the table, airing it out with the fresh air, and I'm putting back with my intention. Lifting up. It's like I think I do it six times, three on this side and three on that side. And every time that laying on you, it gets lighter and is like more connected in you. Is not your body, is like your soul until I get to your soul mm -hmm. and make that connection. So now I can work on your body with your soul and my soul. Like we, mm -hmm. we're late. So intention is very important on that because without that real intention, you can't get it there mm -hmm. yeah. well uh, you know 
even for those people who who aren't like practicing healing modalities uh, you know you mentioned like your mom and and you making the bed i feel like it's it's in any action that we're taking part you know how can we bring that energy of intention or wellness health love like whatever it might be into each action and it's it, i find it hard sometimes to stay in the flow of that though that's where i feel like nature really is quite a beautiful reminder and if i'm getting too chaotic then it's like yeah. hey it's time to go outside and <laughs> like right. go for a walk get lost a bit and spend time yeah. in it really does just like it moves through I find it feel almost like it's moving like this veil through the body kind of like a shift a sifter and oh. then it like okay hey, now again intentionality um yeah. and so, whatever is not for your highest good yes yeah yeah or the insights around those things for sure you know but yeah, hearing you say all of these pieces and, and I'm like, I see, I really do see you as like the mother, like Bina, like that, like energy of that, like, yeah, you're saying the unconditional love, the great sea that just holds. And also, you know, we know it's on the pillar of severity. It, it has the, the nurturance, but it also has the potential for such... <gasps> And so it makes so much sense with everything that you've like shared here, even death kind of being like, you know, you'd enter into that void of be not after going through the abyss, like all of these parts are very much right. tied. <laughs> right. It's so much tied. I mean, it's like, I wouldn't be able to do it really like less, 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 honestly speaking, like, yes, there's this work. I will probably need another 10 years if I did it all by myself. I feel like because being in here, being in like student of 22 teachings and doing the path workings, going through the every, every, um, every gate you open on that tree and then walk in and you learn a lesson and then you move on and you learn another lesson mm -hmm. when you're doing it. It feels like, well, okay, you know, it's a meditation and meditation maybe for whoever, uh, people take it differently, but, and then when you sit with it, they start blossoming. They're like, mm -hmm. do you see this lights coming out? I'm like, uh, okay. Like there was a one moment, I always talk about it. There was a one, I don't know which one was it, but we were standing on the top of the mountain and then um, in the astral level. And then there was a road going down and up and then there was nothing in front of us. And then Naha said, walk. And I'm like, where to? I don't want to go to right. I don't want to go to left. She's like, walk. I'm like, okay, there is no road. And then it was like, you walk the world will appear that 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 was like when you take that just that and imply to your life i know we always question ourselves is, is this really meant to be if i'm really hearing these sounds or i'm going like oh do i need help but if you start really really like listening to your instinct and you start connecting they're non-stop talking mm -hmm. they're like I stopped questioning things. That's the one of the biggest things. And then like trusting that the, that path will appear. You just take it one step. I know it's scary. There's no mm -hmm. road. And you're like, I'm going to fall down. You're like, you walk. Mm -hmm. If you're in the right alignment, you just walk. How do you know you trust your instinct in in that form? And your instinct like, you're about to leave the house, right? You grab your keys, you grab your purse, and then all of a sudden they're like, like grab that book on the shelf. And then you're like, no, this is not time for the book. I'm going to work or I'm going to shopping. I'm just gonna, they're like, grab the book. And you're like, okay. You just turn around and you grab the book. And then you go to like, supermarket and somebody's like 
oh, I wish I have a guidance and I wish I have this something that I can read and I can, you're like, um, here, this is for you. Mm. The plan is already made. Ta-da! And, ta-da! That, 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 those things are start happening more and more often and then the confidence gets built and then you're like, you're full on instinct. Then you don't even question. You just put your intention. You're like, this is how it's supposed to be. And it becomes a B because you're in the perfect alignment and you're like on that vortex but you don't stay on that. Like, it's mm-hmm. not, we don't get on the vortex and settle. We get on the vortex and we walk on the next vortex and then walk on the next vortex. Always mm-hmm. higher, never going down. We do sometimes fall down, it happens, or somebody comes in our life, brings us down a little bit, but you can always pick yourself up and then keep going up and up. And sometimes sideways is good too. Mm. You can just swing like a pendulum. I don't know where you're there at the Kabbalion work uh, with it at the lodge, but it was like the pendulum swings. And then once it's find the space, now it swings upwards too. Like it has many ways to swing, but mm. it doesn't go down. You just swing and you come here. Now you swing upwards over there. And then you come back here, you swing upwards there. You just find yourself where you align to, surrounded by the people who align with you. And everybody else is false. Hmm. Yeah. And it's okay. It's okay that because they have their own journey. Mm-hmm. That's also the thing, you know, is is it's a grief of letting go, is because we're like, oh, I cannot, I, I am friend with this person for all my life. But it's sometimes that's, that's what it is. That's meant to be uh, 20 years of relationship. And yeah. then you, and then you take it to the next one. That doesn't make you a bad person. That doesn't make them a bad person or doesn't make anybody higher or lower. It just, we, we're we meant to be letting go and walk. We're meant to go higher because that's how the life is. Yeah, and I feel like the intuition speaks there too. I've had that happen to me quite a few times, but especially the past right. year, I think a lot of folks did of that having to release uh, relationships that just no longer were of the same frequency or vibration just because it right. was the past are just, kind of going like this it's not one's right one's wrong yeah. and and I as like the year was passing that inkling inside of like this is it it's done it's done you know but for myself having gone through a divorce before like that seemed so much more potent like you you know when there's it, love intimacy in that like sense like it's right. a bit different like you kind of like listen uh, or you know things, but when it's a friendship, like I think there's almost this, maybe from our childhood, even I think of that like best friends forever. Like you know, if you have a friend, then you need to be with them always. But what was starting to happen is that pull to like, okay, this just needs to come. But what happens when I think with anything, when we don't listen to that, then something drastic can happen. We're like kind oh, of yeah. chaos. So like, because yeah. that spirit in my eyes being like it's done. Like, why weren't you listening? Why weren't you listening? I mean, I I saw, I even, I went through a divorce too in my lifetime. And, uh, you know, you, you start something, you're like, oh, okay, this is going to be great. This is going to be forever. But, you know, once you start listening and working on yourself, mm-hmm. you're not the same person anymore. Mm-hmm. And it's not fair for them to try to play the try to uh, play a catch up nonstop, and it's a lot of that brings a lot of um, um, anxiety that brings it. It takes the confidence down, and it, people get frustrated, and they're like, 
why can't you just stop and listen and sit down? I'm like, mm. because you can't. Because there's something is boiling up and taking you to the next level. And we just see everything like forever. Yeah. Nothing. No, and nothing lasts. It's a cycle. Like, the cycle. You know? even, like, even the kids we have is we, we, we create this beautiful, you know, we grow them and they come in and we watch them be, become this beautiful people. And then in, and then we'll let them go. We're open. Mm -hmm. Like once the nurturing part is done and you put all the right things that you know and align, um, not because just because a general public told you because you really mm. truly instinctively believe this is the right knowledge for them, then if there's a time you open your hands and let it go. Like birds give, they they make like four eggs and the babies comes up, they feed them for until their eyes open and then they flew away. Mm -hmm. And the birds find their way. Same thing with the turtles. Same thing for the fishes. Mm -hmm. Like, we think we're, like, so intelligent. But what kind of intelligent are you? Are you intelligent by your soul? Your true being? Are you, your intelligent comes from the divine? Or you read something, somebody write, and it, they think it's right, and that's how it is. It's mm -hmm. like finding that nuance of where is that intelligence and knowingness coming from. It just, it's a lot of nonstop work, but it's mm -hmm. like, but it's also so beautiful and so mm -hmm. rewarding, such a blessing to see when somebody comes to you and say, you changed my life. Mm -hmm. You're like, okay, I'm still walking on my path. Yeah. Kind of yeah you're like okay spirit i hear it i hear it those like confirmations <laughs> yeah that's awesome yeah. okay let's go yeah well and so so i'm curious like your your uh views or just like water you know because you've talked about intuition you've talked about like just yeah this kind of flow that you've been finding yourself in like where does water fit into all of this for you uh, well there's a, a, a lot of places okay so first of all uh is like this body is this body i'm in it right now <laughs> um it come from anatolia and is somehow my Anatolia, which is Turkey right now, is, um, but it's, it actually takes more than that. Mm -hmm. um, it has four sides, is three sides is covered with water. So it's like an island, uh, but one side is connected to the land. So, and somehow my, this body's DNA is be, lived in every corner because I have mm -hmm. a, bloodline from every corner of that Anatolians, the four corners. And so there's a lot of uh, water energy. I was not only this lifetime, but like six generations back, I my uh, DNA is been in nearby the water. Mm. So, uh, so that's the first like deep uh, creation part. And then, and also, water is the only place I completely shut down everything. Mm -hmm. So I do rituals when I'm in, taking a shower, and uh, so and and I talked about this in the how to magic teachings that I did, and um, it just once once you close your eyes and in in the under the water running and it becomes like a veil and droops it in and in that stage it's like almost feels like to me putting my light body on mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So it's not light, but it's a water, but it's like, feels like the light body. And I do a lot of work in that. Um, I, I can, it's, it's like my soul takes it over and says, okay, we're going to cleanse this body. And, and I, I am witnesses. I am witnessing that cleansing process. So is a, is, is, is like so big water is the life. It mm -hmm. brings everything uh, together, like even like being in Egypt and mm -hmm. getting into the Nile and and then knowing that Nile waters, it travels the whole world and comes back. It's like if you drop something in the Nile, they believe it's going to come back to mm -hmm. like go travel. Because the Nile pours into the Mediterranean water, Mediterranean water connects with the ocean, and then it comes back again, and then it pours into the Nile back. So there's like full circle and constant flowing, and and because it's flowing, it's not standing, it's not settling. So imagine yourself as a water. Mm -hmm. So. That's how we're supposed to be. We're not supposed to be settling somewhere because when you settle, what happens to the water when it settles? It gets lurky, it gets changed color, things start growing on it. Is it beneficial for the water? I don't know. I don't think so because it's now is getting, it's water elements is changing and becoming this alchemical thing and it becomes something, but it's not water anymore. Mm -hmm. So water meant to be flow, constant flowing and cleansing and taking everything on the way. Mm -hmm. And even those like, when you're like in the ocean, you look at the rocks formations, you see the holes and you see like, the water went in and opened up this caves. Well, you're like, oh, this is, looks cool, but there's a birds live in there. There's a animals lives in there. Water knew that to create those things. So mm -hmm. other creatures like crabs and stuff live in there. Like what I'm trying to say is when we're living our life, we're, we're supposed to be like a water in constant flow, constantly purified, and not, like we're not even meant to be captured. Only time we put it a water in the glass, and I'm sure you know this, you, like when you're learning something, you put the glass of water, and it, it just takes it in. And when you drink it, it amplifies the knowledge that you just heard because you saw it, you hear it, you acknowledge it. Now you put it in your body and that goes to, because when we drink water, we just don't put it in our stomach. It just goes into our body and then it like explodes and goes to our bones, our our organs, our cells, it got start nur nurturing by all the elements in the water. Mm -hmm. So it's like not just seen as a water, the knowing that this is this is the like life force. Every time you touch the water and then you purify someone and it's like a giving it at a next chance, giving mm -hmm. in a another uh, gate opening is like, here you go. Remember, remember to be a water. Remember to be be purified. Just remember, because if we remember it, yeah, that's, we just need to remember it. Our, our souls already know. Yeah. We need to remember it as well, us, not them. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, no, I, I just.
Yeah, I love it. Because I'm thinking too how like mem is even in the word remember, right? Like mem I, being water. Exactly. So it's just, and it is, it's true. Exactly. I mean, they've done research seeing how it holds memory, how it, you know, so, and then I was seeing how you were talking about the Nile River and, you know, thinking about how many millennia then, how many thousands of years that water has gone through this very sacred place of knowledge and understanding and like uh ritual you know all the energy of that sun i want to say that's being imbued through that kind of channel the nile and then dispersed throughout right. the rest of the body of the world like yeah. it's never ending circle like the sun yeah. comes in the water is is as vaporize and that becomes a cloud and then it goes and comes back in the water again it's like never ending and cleansing it just we just need to stop and notice we're just mm -hmm. waiting for us to see it's not just the water it's just it's more is is it the life that's mm -hmm. where the life coming from because without the water we're like what 30 percent of water I mean, or, or more i think i think it's 70 percent or something right. yeah, yeah yeah like it's, it's very like, much a part of us yeah. so mm -hmm. yeah there's a reason for it right mm -hmm. bodies are like that so mm -hmm. why don't we align with it and yeah yeah it's just the intention i'm not sure <laughs> And I appreciate that. I feel like you've given everyone listening like a, a lot of different ways in which they can connect to the water, to the intentionality of life and like nature, just through these, these like practices of just being present, kind of like being more conscious within the actions or within the places that we find ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that's really, really like beneficial. I wonder if there's anything else that you feel like you'd like to share or um, I mean, I can talk for hours. I can't. <laughs> I know, but already, I'm like, I'm gonna have to do this again with her. Like, yeah, no, I, I'm always. I mean, this because these conversations are very important, mm -hmm. and it's like just like I can't say enough about the dead teachings because, to right and awakening, becoming, understanding understanding what's magic understanding what happens to us understanding the grief and is it really grief or it just like there's so many things that we just need to talk about it so we can normalize it mm -hmm. is so we can because more easier we can have this process go more smoothly is better than in boxing things and labeling things because the generations are we raising right now the kids coming out i just want that i don't want them to be 40 to understand all of this mm -hmm. if they can understand this in their like early 20s what a wonderful life that will be because that means they're going to do that to the next generation and their kid is going to be like that. So we just need to talk about things and see the more beauty on things and not settle and mm -hmm. keep moving and not look at things too close. Sometimes we need to step out and look at things to understand and see the true meaning of it. Yeah, that third, that third observation. Oh, oh, I could go into so many things about the tree of life in this whole conversation. I, know, I probably I know, won't, right? I won't, but like, is it but yeah. the perfect structure? Is like mm -hmm. without the foundation, absolutely coming from the tree right behind me. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah. yes, so it, it gives that, yes, you're doing this thing, but it's like when you have a map when you have the blueprint to walk on and, but you can still do your own thing, but having that is the most amazing gift. So I'm mm -hmm. always grateful for 
the teachers and teachers teachers yeah yeah all those many ancestors yeah. spirit guides and beyond hey yeah right. oh, yeah well i thank you for this nazarin yeah and i i'm sure people might be wondering like how can they contact you reach out to you if they're interested either in like some of the healing work that you do or other teachings that you share sure well they can find me at 22 teachings it's a 22 teachings uh website and um uh they can also send an email to 22 teachings 22 teachings at, at gmail.com uh they can text the school number to get or call the school to get the information but uh i'm also on the instagram on the social media so they can um i think you have the link for yeah that. i'll share that yeah and i'm i i'm just i'm just open and whoever needs to become on that pad and like um if i'm gonna me i am just joyful to meet with more people and i will be grateful to if they decide to connect one day, I will be here. And yeah, I do one-on-one -on -one healings at the school and I have a group healings uh, sometimes twice a month, but normally is a once a month. Um, uh, they usually get sold out. So they need to like book it month or two months in advance. And didn't uh, I see that now those are hybrid as well? Because I don't think that was the case before. Was that just that rainbow? No, rainbow bark is the only one is a hybrid oh, right okay. now. Okay, that's why I was and like, my oh. teaching that hybrid. Uh, because I mean, rainbow bark created after the death teachings, so we can hold a um a grief circle that we can talk about it. Because all I want to do is talk about it and normalize it express how you feel without the judgment so we can talk about it um but everything else like my healings are i do hybrid i do online healing in one-on-one but my group healings right now still uh, in person because mm -hmm. i need uh, uh yeah there's a lot of like hands-on action happening but in the future uh, it might become hybrid one day which yeah I've, i look um, forward to that yeah but it's also an excuse to come back to la so yes, please, <laughs> like... do. please do i would love to experience that with you it will be great yeah sweet okay well so i'll link in your your instagram handle the uh, 22 yeah. teachings.com website so people have all that information and um, okay. yeah i definitely encourage you to check out check out Nezrin's teachings. You can access the recordings even of some of these previous lectures and, and lessons, which is really amazing. Um, so I just want to, yeah, thank you again for being here with me and sharing, sharing living magic. <laughs> thank, <laughs> you. Yeah. thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for